Hi, St. Clair's. This week, we have a special video to show you about an early Thanksgiving dinner that my family and I had. My dad is visiting, and he's recovering from knee surgery, and we don't know when we'll see him again. So we thought, being grateful for our time together, we would have a nice early Thanksgiving dinner. We're singing a song that we sang with the whole congregation last week on our Zoom service. And it's a very familiar song, so you'll probably recognize it. During the video, see if you can figure out what Beckin is doing. He's a little bouncy. After our video of Thanksgiving, Miss Suzanne will share a story from her new place in Nashville. And she will sing a song. And last, Rowan will sing a song that Miss Suzanne is talking about in her story. And this is a recording of Rowan singing the song from three years ago, so his voice sounds a little younger. We hope you enjoy it. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. From all that dwell below the into and talk about today, the Gospel reading for August 23rd, comes from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. And it goes like this. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, or Philippi, again, it's those hard Bible places, hard to pronounce. He asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. And that's the end of the reading. So this, this reflection is kind of about identification and recognizing things or people. So I have a question for you. I know that you know who I am, um, hopefully, unless you're a new kid that I haven't met in person before in January. Um, you probably recognize me because you've seen me before and I have 
done some other things on video or you've seen me in person, like you've seen Kathy, Miss Kathy, or Miss Mariah, or Miss Wendy, or Mr. Canute, some of the people that help, or Mr. Larry, um, Miss Chris, some of the people who help with children and youth formation. So I think you recognize most of them, even if you haven't seen them for a long time. Um, but there's some things I want you to identify that aren't people. So do you know what this is? It's kind of interesting looking. It's got a fish on it. Does anyone have any idea what this might do? Well, this is an old fashioned can opener. It, um, when I was young, they opened cans with this part right here, like they had bottle tops and they still have bottle tops now, or you can open a can like, um, something to pour out of this part, but we don't use them a lot anymore. You might have one in your kitchen at your house. Um, we don't use them a lot. And I like this one cause it was my granddaddy's and it has a fish on it. My granddaddy was a big fisherman in Nashville. And I imagine he got this when he went fishing. Um, he used to go fishing in Florida and he fished all around Tennessee. So this is kind of a pretty fancy one because it stayed really nice for all these years. And my granddaddy's been gone since the mid eighties. So do you know what this is? Some of you might know what this is. It's kind of small, but this, they come in bigger sizes and you can buy them in the store and you use them in the kitchen. And this one is called a rolling pin. And this rolling pin is kind of special because it was carved from wood. I don't know if you can tell by looking, but my grandmother, who I knew and loved here in Nashville, she, her, this belonged to her mama. So it's my great grandmother's and my great granddaddy carved it out of wood. And all the time I was growing up and we'd come every summer to Nashville once we moved to Michigan when I was a child, my grandmother would make biscuits with this rolling pin. So this is what this is. And you might not see it every day. You don't see it a lot. Um, your mom might use it or your dad when you make cookies, but it's not something we see every day. So maybe some of you didn't know. So I hope you kind of guessed about the two things um, and what they were and how to identify them. But you might not have known if I hadn't told you. And well, you might have, but you might not have. Um, our gospel lesson also involves identification or identifying things, but identifying people. So Jesus gave his disciples a little quiz asking them who they thought he was. Not everyone recognized Jesus right away when he walked the earth. And some people were confused about interpreting prophecies and understanding. So Jesus asked who the disciples thought he was, and he got a variety of answers. I might have gotten a variety of answers about those things I showed you too. The disciples said that some people claimed he was a previous prophet or figure, but good old Peter spoke up and said that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. He recognized who Jesus was. That was important to the ministry of Jesus and his followers, even though he told them not to spread the word around too much about who he was. But what about us? Do we know who Jesus is? Do we understand and proclaim it? Sometimes it's easy to become sort of like blasé to the idea or used to the idea and maybe even kind of bored with it. But it's critical and meaningful for us to know that Jesus wasn't just a neat person or a healer or a person who performed miracles um, or someone who fulfilled God's promises from the olden days. We know that Jesus is God's son and is one with God, with the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know what else? We don't have to keep it to ourselves um, like Jesus asked the disciples to. We can share it with people. And you might not understand stood what the tools were that I was holding up, the kitchen tools, without me explaining it. And some people don't understand about Jesus and God. They need people like us to explain and describe it or live it. We know even more than Peter did that Jesus was and is the Messiah. He died and came back to life for us. We can't keep that amazing news to ourselves, but we are called to celebrate it and explain it to others. 
um, who do you think our Savior is? It's more than just a faith formation answer, maybe to a little quiz. It truly is all about Jesus. So one of the ways that you can show people up with Jesus, I think I spoke about this before, you don't have to carry around a Bible or a cross, and you don't have to always know a chapter or a verse from a Bible reading, but you have people will know about Jesus from you in your everyday life, once we get back to normal life, um, by the way that you show love to people. And one of my favorite songs, and I'm not a good singer, if you're a person who has a chance to take music as a class or instrument um, or learn an instrument, I suggest you do it because as a child, I didn't have that opportunity. Um, and now I kind of regret it because I don't know much about music. I took a music class in college, but it was just to understand and appreciate music. Not, not I really don't know like John and some of the people in the choir, Miss Kathy. Um, so, um, one of the songs that I love, and it kind of reminds me of this, what we're talking about, it, proclaiming about Jesus, is it goes like this. They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. Again, I'm not a great singer, but I wanted to show you what that song means to me. I love that song because it says, go out in the world, and be loving and have all the traits that Christians are supposed to have about forgiving and being kind and helpful. And um, if you do that, then people will know that you're a Christian by your love. And then they might ask you about your church or your faith. So I'd like to close with a prayer and I hope you're doing okay. I know school's coming up. I haven't... Um, heard back too much about Vacation Bible School. If you liked it, if you used it, if you used the box that you picked up. So I'd love to hear back from you. I got um, some mail from Clara and Lulu in the post, um, regular old school post office mail. And I was tickled about that. Um, but if you'd like to, send me an email or if you want to Zoom with me, let your folks know. And give me a call if you can. I... Um, if I can answer, I will, and I'll be glad to chat with you. So I'd like to close with this prayer. Dear God, thank you for your revealing yourself through Jesus. We know that he is our Savior and Messiah. Help us to remember that and proclaim it to others. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. So I hope to see you next time that I make a video. and. I think about you and I remember you in my prayers and I'll talk to you next week if I don't see you on Zoom on Sunday, which I'd love to. Bye-bye. Our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And no, no, we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, no, no, we are Christians by our love. Our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with some power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with with some power and love. Our God is an awesome God.